Something every Photoshop user can benefit from knowing is how to use the transform tool in Photoshop and when it's appropriate to use all of the different options, especially the skew, distort, and perspective options, and what makes them different because at first glance, they seem sort of the same. So let's kind of go over it. Right now, I just have my regular transform tool selected and I can scale my image with consistent uh, and linked horizontal and vertical axes. But if I want to free transform it, and you're not in your transform tool, first off, let's just show you how to get there. I'm going to hit my move tool. That will give me a transform box. Or you can hit control T on your keyboard. And that's kind of my go to. So control T and then I can scale it. But what if I want to move each corner independently? Well, then I'm going to hold down just the control button and I can grab the corners and move them wherever I want. That's your free transform tool. And that is going to be super useful um, in a pinch. So hold down control and you can move the corners. But what about the other options? Like I showed you before, edit has transform skew, distort, and perspective. Uh, so if I want to try skew, I'll hit that and I can grab a corner and move it. And you'll see this is a little different because it is locked on one axis. So as I move it, I can only move along the X or the Y here. And I'm, there we go, cool. So as you've seen, it only moves one side of a selection or layer. And when you drag a side handle, it shifts that side while keeping the opposite end fixed. So nothing is happening to this end when I move this point. The bottom is staying locked into place and actually so is the left hand side here. This creates subtle shifts in angle or orientation and adds a sense of lean, like the image is leaning or movement. It's a little bit more limited than our free transform, but it helps when you're trying to keep a level of realism, as you can see. So that skew skews things a little. Um, what about the other options? So now I'm still in my transform tool, so I don't actually need to go to edit to change. I can just right click over and you'll see I have my options here. So we're in skew. Let's go to distort and see what that does. Distort lets you move each corner independently. It's a lot like free transform. You're fully flexible. You have no constraints on angle or alignment. I can move multiple ones here, as you can see. Um, this is great for simulating objects seen from off center of an angle, placing artwork onto screens when I need to match something exactly to something else. Say there was a piece of artwork and this needed to fit right on top, or if I'm like mimicking something that's on a screen that's at an angle in an image, uh, it's great for fixing off kilter shapes manually. So if something's not quite working, you can really adjust things and have full control. Distort isn't uh, locked into realism though. So if you're trying to create something very realistic and you just grab your distort and, uh, and play around, it may not be the best option for you. And that brings us to perspective. So if I right click again and go to perspective, you'll see how this one's different. This one moves corners linked in pairs to simulate depth, uh, depth and vanishing points. So right off the bat, you'll see when I move the top corner, the bottom corner on the Y axis moves with it. And that's trying to create a realistic distortion. Um, so that's how perspective works. It creates the illusion that an object is getting smaller as it recedes into space. It's locked into realism a bit more than distort is. So this is great for making flat images appear 3D. Um, it's also great at adding realistic perspective, like placing a sign on a building. You know that you've got a, um, a realistic sense of perspective when you use this transform tool. So perspective is great because it simulates realistic depth. What makes skew and distort great? Well, Distort can move corners individually. So you have a high level of control with distort. The realism, not as much, but I personally like the level of control here. So I, I enjoy using distort. Skew, however, 
is great because it has a level of balance. You can keep opposite sides parallel. So if I go back to skew, I can move my sides and I'm still parallel in my uh, Y axis. And that is very helpful for creating slight tilts and shifts. Skew is a more subtle option and always, you know, useful as well. So if you don't know which one to use, I would try them all and see what looks the best. It's really easy to undo in Photoshop. So just control Z if you don't like it and try a different one. Um, like I said, I think I use distort the most, but perspective second most and probably skew the least, but they're all great. So I hope that this helped you guys. Remember, you can also just do control T and then hold down control and you can free transform. And sometimes that's all you need as well. So I hope this helps. Like I said, thank you guys. You're great. I love that uh, you guys tune in and continue to tune in. I have playlists upon playlists and I will see you in another video.